Hi, this is Patrick East here, and I'm here with Mayor Mike Manning, and you're watching the WVLT Channel 17 Talk Show. Uh, now, how are you doing? I'm doing well today. Um, I saw recently that uh, Water Fleet will be sharing ambulance system with the Green Island. Can you tell us more? Uh, yes. Um, we, we already do um, mutual aid fire with Green Island, and uh, our last group effort was we, we uh, shared the cost of a new ladder truck. We needed a new ladder, they needed a new ladder, and instead of us both buying one, we shared the cost there. Um, what we've done with the ambulance is we're simply now going to be uh, covering ambulance calls for Green Island as the first choice. And provided we don't have anything going on in Water Elite, where the ambulance is already tied up, we'll be re responding to Green Island. Um, if we're not available, Green Island will continue to call a, a private carrier like Empire or Mohawk. Um, for Green Island, it costs them nothing. We're doing the service for free. And for us, it really doesn't cost us anything more because uh, our fire department is staffed whether we're on a call or not. And uh, in this case, there's the added bonus of typically uh, the person being taken to the hospital would pay us a fee for the transport. So it's a, uh, a revenue generating program for the city of Waterloo. Uh, now, what happens if they're, um, if we're at a call, I mean, if Waterfleet's at a call at Green Island and we need a call? Uh, do you know yet? Uh, yeah. Um, each, each situation will be assessed differently, but if, if our fire department and or our ambulance are already tied up, if we have the capacity, we have two ambulances, so there's a possibility we could still field the call. But if not, the calls would just roll over to the private carriers. Uh, in our case, uh, we go to Mohawk next, and, and Green Island goes to Empire. Uh, we also have the ability uh, to bring in Troy, who has an ambulance service, and the town of Colony. So it's a pretty well set up system. All we're really doing is putting uh, a different name at the top of the call list. So uh, there'll be no uh, shortage of, of ambulances. Is there anything more planned for the new Erie Canal Park? Uh, other than finishing touches, pretty much what you see now, uh, the walls of the canal have been exposed, and that's, and we've planted uh, new grass down inside, put some stairs in. What's left is really uh, lighting and uh, fencing to protect it so no one drives into the big hole that we just put down there. But uh, we did put in a plaque with some uh, info on the canal, and uh, we also dedicated the canal to, to Mayor Donnelly, who was one of our longest tenured mayors and uh, ironically Mayor Donnelly started the um, tradition, the policy of naming things after past mayors like in, uh, in the Waterloo Housing Authority all the complexes are named after a former mayor and he was the only mayor who didn't have anything named after him. <laughs> so we took care of that. Uh, now can you tell me where the, um, the canal is located? Um, the canal that's exposed or well, yeah, where it used to be? Um, where it used to be. Well, what we exposed was more what they called the side cut. And the side cut is uh, a way that you could get in off of the river and into the canal. So the canal actually ran parallel to the river. And it ran in today's city pretty much down 2nd Avenue uh, through the arsenal, down 2nd Avenue, um, the current firehouse and DPW garage are built pretty much right, right over where the canal would be, uh, the dome. So the canal was kind of just, just the other side of 2nd Avenue. And then you could either uh, keep going or, or cut back out to the river. But uh, according to records, most of, uh, if you were going up from New York City and then going out west, you know, you pretty much stopped in Water Valley to unload or rest or get ready to, to take that part of the journey. But uh, it'd probably, it'd probably be a good thing to interview, uh, maybe on one of your shows, Tom Rogusta from the Historical Society. At the dedication, he gave a pretty interesting talk of you know, uh, the timeline of the canal and what happened in Water Elite. It was very interesting. Now, do you have any um, information on, uh, we had recently had a boat fire in the in the Hudson, uh, do you have anything, um, any information? Well, a boat uh, uh, 
floated down river from, you know, up the Tro Troika Hoseway, and it was on fire, and it was out in a location where uh, uh, no one could get to it. We tried to get to it from our river park, and basically what we had to wait for it to do is come ashore, and then uh, they were able to put the fire out by uh, shooting over it, uh, down from 787, down to it. Um, it was being watched so it didn't run into something like the bridge or something and cause damage, but it, it came ashore right over here where there's really nothing to damage. So uh, I guess more excitement than actual, uh, actual problem. Um, can you tell our viewers of the new notific notification system for the Water Fleet uh, residents? Sure. Um, you know, as we uh, continue to try and find better ways to uh, keep everyone notified of what's going on, not only for emergencies, but uh, large events that affect the city, the Arsenal City Run, uh, the parade, um, things like that that are going on that are going to disrupt a section of the city. We're going to be uh, soon putting out information uh, where the residents can come on and uh, create their own uh, information uh, screen, name, address, uh, phone numbers, uh, emails. This new system will be able to send phone, uh, text, and email uh, to whatever numbers and get put into the system. So it's really going to be um, somewhat dependent on the residents to get in there and, and put their information in so we can get to them. But then we have plans to uh, do a lot more notifying than we've done in the past. In the past, we've pretty much only done it for limited events, and we're using a, uh, a database of phone numbers that we've been collecting piecemeal, uh, most of which we've collected uh, strictly for snow emergency. But this new system will allow us to notify for anything and everything, so pretty excited about it. And everyone should watch for that. Uh, within the week after Thanksgiving, we'll be making an announcement, and hopefully we can get everyone in there. If you don't have a computer, uh, we'll be having uh, locations like the library and, and City Hall and, and perhaps even housing can help um, giving access to a computer so people can go in and sign up. Uh, do you, do you en did you enjoy the Eagles-Giants game this past Sunday? <laughs> I, sure, I, I sure did. You did? Oh, so you're an Eagles fan. Okay. No, but uh, I'm, I have to say I'm... Uh, uh, Pleased with the Giants for they they were able to drive the ball down. Unfortunately, you know Eli Manning fumbled. But uh, in the past, I don't know if they they make that play. And we all know what happened last year with the Eagles Giants. That that total unraveling didn't happen this year. So I mean, uh, still a long way to go in the season. And uh, Giants fans will just have to hold their breath like we do every year. All right. Thank you, Mayor Mike Manning. Uh, this is Patrick Keith here, and we're s signing off.